Philosophers have now answered the biggest and deepest questions that plagued humanity for millennia. Is there a God? No. Does free will exist? Yes. At least, kind of. Are there mind-independent moral facts? Yes. Well, probably. In this episode we will dive into the results of a 2020 survey into how mostly Western philosophers answer the biggest questions in their field. First, please let us bore you with some important details on how the study was conducted. David Bouget and David Chalmers conducted the so-called Phil Survey study back in 2009 and then again in 2020. In 2009, 648 philosophers from mostly Western universities answered 30 of the most important philosophical questions. In 2020, Bouget and Chalmers made the survey more detailed and got the data of 1785 philosophers from English-speaking institutions and they answered the same 30 questions plus 70 more. Why would you care about such a study? Well, first, if you are a philosophy nerd like us, that's just super interesting. We finally have a systematic way to know how current philosophers would answer the biggest questions in the field. But take the data with a huge grain of salt. It is not really representative of all philosophy and mostly comes from Western English speaking and rather analytic philosophers. Another reason to care about such results is that philosophers often refer to what they themselves and their colleagues think in order to defend their favorite view. Wait a minute, you do not believe in objective moral facts? Well, that's absurd, because me and my friends all think that there are such objective moral facts. Yes, that's actually how some arguments in philosophy work, so we better analyze what they actually think. Okay, how did this study work? Philosophers were contacted via email and were given short versions of important philosophical questions or debates, such as God, theism or atheism. Then they were able to rank their answers from accept to lean towards one of the mentioned views or give a different view. In the results that we are going to present to you, both accept and lean towards are summarized as endorsement of a specific view. For example, if 30 philosophers accept moral realism and 50 philosophers lean towards moral realism, we will say that 80 philosophers think that moral realism is true. By the way, one of the awesome things about the study is that you can really play around with the data yourself, filter by specific demographic factors and so forth. We will link to it in the description below. Okay, let's get to the questions. Don't worry, we will not assault you with presenting the results of a hundred questions. Rather, we choose what we think is most interesting to a broader audience and maybe also to ourselves. Let's dive into it. This question has been debated in philosophy and public life probably since we were able to ask that question. The current answer Two-thirds of philosophers believe that there is no God. But still, 18.9% of philosophers do believe in some form of theism, which was a bit surprising at least to us. Another old question in philosophy is whether we have free will. Here it might be better to quickly explain the concepts that are typically used. Compatibilism refers to the view that free will and determinism are, well, compatible with each other. And typically philosophers who are compatibilists think that there is some form of free will. Libertarians, no, not the political type, are incompatibilists, so they don't think that free will and determinism work together. But they do believe in free will, so they typically reject determinism. If we understand the terms in this way, 78% of surveyed philosophers do think that free will exists in some shape or form. And only roughly 11% reject free will. Free will is often closely related to important ethical questions, so let us take a look at some of those. If you have been around in ethical debates, you probably heard about the trolley dilemma. Maybe you have even been surveyed on one of those. And philosophers have been as well. Here's the standard scenario, really quick. A runaway trolley is headed towards a track where five people lie. You stand nearby, cannot save them, cannot call to them and cannot stop the trolley. But there is a lever next to you, which diverts the trolley to another track where one person lies and would be killed by the trolley. Do you pull the lever? 63.4% of philosophers would pull the lever. 13.3% would not do so and let the five people be killed. And a quarter gave a different answer than that. But there are many more trolley dilemmas, so let's take another one. The so-called footbridge case. Now, you are on the bridge rather than next to a lever, otherwise the scenario is the same. A trolley is headed towards five people, but here you are not alone on the bridge. There is a large man and for whatever reason you know that when you push him, he will be killed by the trolley, but the trolley will stop and the five people on the tracks will be saved. 
would you push the large man? Here, only 22% of philosophers were willing to save the five people, even though the consequences appear to be the same as in the switch case. 56% would do nothing and let the five people be killed. Another very applied question in the survey concerns abortion. The public debate around whether or not abortion in the first trimester is morally justifiable is extremely heated. Surprisingly, philosophers seem quite clear on that one. 81.7% of philosophers lean towards or endorse that abortion is morally permissible. If you ever talk to philosophy students, you might have heard that a lot of them are vegetarians or vegans. There is even some data that shows that philosophers tend to be vegetarian to a higher degree than other groups of people. But what about the endorsement of vegetarianism and veganism? Almost half of them lean towards or accept vegetarianism or veganism. And only a quarter endorses eating meat. That's quite interesting as this fits well with what we know about the self-reported behavior of philosophers. Let's get a bit more abstract. Do you believe that there are objective moral facts, independent of how we humans think, feel or are psychologically shaped? Yes? Then you might very well be a moral realist. In metaethics, realism is defined as the view that there are moral truths or facts, independent of our mental states. Anti-realists, in contrast of course, think that morality somehow depends on these mental states. 62.1% of philosophers self-identify as moral realists. Maybe you think that this is obviously the intuitive view to hold, but it is actually super hard to explain how such moral facts can exist and we don't think that there is a commonly accepted answer to that. That's why it is not surprising that a quarter of philosophers directly reject moral realism. Science clearly makes progress. But what about philosophy? As you can see, we still debate the biggest and deepest questions and there is still quite some disagreement. Does that mean that philosophy does not make progress? No, at least not according to the philosophers that have been asked, which might not be surprising as it would be a bit awkward to admit as a philosopher that there is no progress in philosophy. Only 3.8% of philosophers believe that there is actually no progress. So all in all, our discipline seems to be quite optimistic. Okay, these were some of the big questions. Let's finish with some that pertain to what is sometimes called the culture wars. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. How do philosophers think about such issues? Let's start with gender. What do the survey philosophers think about the nature of gender? There are several options here. 29% think that gender is biological in nature and 21.5% say it's psychological. But most, 63.1%, think that gender is a social construct. Here, we thought it would be interesting to play around with the tools of the survey. As mentioned, you can specify which answers you want to see. So, what do philosophers who work specifically on the philosophy of race and gender think about gender? With these philosophers, almost 90% lean towards or accept gender as a social construct. So you see that the data changes with the job specification. Another culture war topic is the controversial question, capitalism or socialism. Unfortunately, these terms were not specifically defined for the survey, so we probably need to go with the typical understanding. Socialism is when the state or the proletariat owns the means of production. Capitalism is when these are in the hands of private owners, or at least can be. There's of course a lot in between, but what do philosophers say about these broad categories? It is quite interesting that half of the philosophers accept or lean towards socialism. That certainly does not represent the broader public in the US or Europe. But again, we don't really know the details of how philosophers understand these terms and only have rough endorsements. These were just 10 of the 100 questions that contemporary philosophers answered. Where do you fall on these? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this kind of content on how the discipline of philosophy works and what it thinks, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe.